I'd never met Lamson. I don't even know his first name, or is Lamson his first name? But for the past eight years, I've entrusted him twice a day with the safety of my children. Lamson is the bus driver who has the route that extends to the far reaches of our hamlet. Although less than 10 miles between here and the school, it's a 45 minute bus route that takes place almost entirely on unpaved hilly back roads. The route passes dairy farms, rushing brooks, sugar bushes, the best of beyonder. But to experience it, one must brave the nether side of Vermont's scenic roads, mud, washboard, and ice. Lampson spends little time sightseeing. The challenge of maneuvering a yellow steel box jammed with kids from five to 13 does not permit the luxury of leaf peeping. Although I've never met him, he's like one of the family. He takes care of those, those nosebleed and bleeds in other unexpected emergencies. The children tease him and he gives it right back. At Christmas, he provides candy and on the last day of school, sodas. I hear about it at the dinner table. It's the highest form of compliment when I say that Lamson is a beyonder kind of guy. Last year, on the Friday just before Christmas, a drizzle so fine as to be almost imperceptible began around noon. I realized there was a problem when I fishtailed on the interstate. It was one of those situations that the veteran Vermonter recognizes as trouble with a capital T. Moisture meets fr frigid pavement, resulting in ice. Conditions get even worse on the back roads. The mist became a light rain. In offices around the state, Holiday revelry was curtailed in favor of driving home while it was still daylight. Even with last minute shopping and errands, these were conditions to grind Vermont to a standstill, with residents content to make it to the comfort of the hearth and no further. The real extent of this particular trouble became evident when I saw seven cars awaiting the sand truck at the bottom of the hill leading to West Brookfield. The hill's an ice ball, said one of the stranded seven a native beyond right and no foreigner to trouble. Any word on the school bus, I asked? It's late, but that's all I know. The school bus is late. These four words bring many elements of life into sharper focus. This is a world where the elements must not be taken for granted. A small slip, an error in timing, an unseeable patch of ice, and our entire lives can instantly be inverted in a ditch. Because I'm not too bright, and because I felt emboldened by my four-wheel drive vehicle, I charged up the hill, taking with me two neighbors who balanced my chances of making it against the time it would take for the sand truck to reach our neck of the woods. Piece of cake. Well, maybe not for the ordinary guy, but for someone with my driving abilities, no problem, man. There was tension apparent in the village, settling in as visibly as the fog and the darkness. The reports were grim. Yes, the school bus was stuck caught between two hills, too steep and icy to climb. The sand trucks, both of them, were shuttling back and forth to help, but the rate of icing was too great for them to keep up. Maybe we should have voted for that third truck at town meeting. It hadn't seemed like such a necessary thing at the time, but the kids, our children, had not been stuck in the cold, dark middle of nowhere, with no one to comfort them and keep them safe, except lambs. That's when we all began appreciating the guy. We gathered in the kitchen, warm by the stove and cups of coffee, and the mood lightened as the ice worsened. Poor kids, we thought, and then upon reflection, poor Lamson. The phone network kept us informed. After the obligatory Christmas parties at school, the kids had been put on the bus early, and Lamson provided them with even more candy. Now the guy was captive in a steel box with 45 sugar-juiced hyper banshees looking forward to Santa. The man was probably tied to his seat, the wheel commandeered by a 10-year-old. It was pitch black, nearly three hours late, when we heard the sand truck grinding up the hill. The school bus was inches behind. The kids poured out bubbling tales of adventure, none the worse except for one common woe. Everyone had to pee. As the children ran to bathrooms, Lamson barely had time for a wave, let alone the formal acceptance of accolades. Like another man who delivers precious gifts at Christmas, he had more promises to keep. All was well once again in the land of Beyonder, and I swear as Lamson and his yellow sleigh clattered down the hill, the chains of his tires sounded like jingle bells.